Hello everyone, my name is Katrenza. Welcome to another Black Desert Online Guide. So, what should you do after you've gotten full Pen Tavala gear? What should your progress be like from here? You can say this is sort of a part two to the complete Black Desert Online Season Guide that I completed two weeks ago, but not really. This video can also help you if you have absolutely no idea what to do, where to grind or what gear to purchase. So, in summary to your question, how do I go from full Pentuvala gear to soft cap gear to maybe even hard cap gear? Well, in this guide, I'll be recommending to you certain things you can do to make your progress to your desired goal much, much easier. If you follow the entire process, you could see yourself with three or maybe even four pen boss gear by around three weeks time, which is really super califragilistic, expialidociously cool and amazing. And to top this off, by around a month and a half, you'll also be getting a free pen accessory. So honestly, this could be your gear in less than two months with minimal amount of playing. I hope you find this video helpful and thank you for watching. All right, so please bear with me, okay? I will try to simplify the process as much as possible. The first step to maximizing your potential is to keep certain items that you'll inevitably get just by logging in thanks to the attendance rewards. You will get a ton of these materials, but it's important not to sell them. You'll also be getting an abundant amount while grinding as well. Here are the items you will want to keep, never to be sold, until you are done with what I'm about to tell you. The first item is the Concentrated Magical Blackstone Weapon, or Armour. Doesn't matter. Pick one to keep, do not sell. You will need a total of 150 of these at some point. The second item is the Memory Fragments. Do not sell these and do not use these. You will have to eventually turn in 1,000 Memory Fragments at some point. Third item is the regular Blackstone's Armour, or Weapon. Don't sell these because you will need a lot of them. Roughly around 18,000. Do not use these either because enchanting is a waste of money. Early progression doesn't require you to enchant past your Tuvala gear anyway. You will save a lot of money by saving up your silver and buying it outright from the marketplace. You may be tempted to sell them for money, but trust me, you will save more money by not selling. If you do this right, you will never have to buy a single thing for the next step that we're about to do. If you happen to have sold at some point, then just accumulate them slowly from the attendance reward and grinding. I don't believe in buying these materials ever, and these are the common mistakes that I see new players do, because they don't realise that they'll need to turn in these resources for a bigger reward. Are you still with me? If so, that's beyond awesome. Alrighty, so the second step I recommend is to start two different projects at the same time. The first project is called the Guaranteed Pen Accessory Project, and the second project is called the Guaranteed Pen Boss Gear Project. These two projects are time-gated, and they take a very small amount of effort to do each day of the week. Additionally, you could do both projects at the same time, essentially killing two birds with one stone. So I'll explain to you how to complete both. First, I'll start with the Guaranteed Pen Accessory Project. The Guaranteed Pen Accessory Path is a series of daily quests that takes 45 days to complete if you are consistent. It's much cheaper than trying to create or buy yourself a pen accessory. To get started, talk to the Black Spirit and accept a quest called A Cry for Help. This quest will take you to the NPC called Jatina and she will offer you a follow-on quest called Old Moon Guild's Trade Offer. Now, obviously, as you can see, it's not appearing for me. This is because I've already completed it, but it will be there for you. Completing this short quest chain will also provide you the entry to doing both the accessory and the pen boss gear project, but let's focus on the accessory for now. If you cannot see any quests from Jatina for whatever reason, make sure all quests are turned on at the bottom of your quest log by pressing O. Jatina can be found in all major cities. You can also use the Fine NPC system on the top right corner next to your mini-map. Just type Jatina and it will set a path for your character to follow. Once you're done with that, you'll be able to choose one of the three following accessories. Ring of Crescent Guardian, Narc Earring, or Tungrad Earring. I can explain to you all three options, but to be perfectly honest, it's not even a debate. By far, the best choice is the Ring of the Crescent Guardian. This accessory provides the most AP. Therefore, it is the best bang for your buck. Now that you have your base accessory, you will need a special type of black stone called Burning Moonlight Blackstone. This is the primary blackstone used to enhance your accessory all the way to pen with 100% success rate. You will need 180 of these burning moonlight blackstone. 
To create one, you will need five different ingredients. One burning moonlight powder, one Yona's fragment, one old moon catalyst, three magical shards and 110 black stones weapon or armor. All five ingredients when combined through simple alchemy will produce a single burning moonlight black stone. Please do not worry and you don't have to be overwhelmed or confused. I'm right here for you. These ingredients are super, super easy to get and I will explain how you can obtain each one of them. The first material is the Burning Moonlight Black Stone Powder. This can be obtained by completing Jatina's daily subjugation quest. The quest can only be completed once per day and it resets at 8pm Eastern Time. Jatina will also provide you two options for a daily. The first option is the daily subjugation quest. This one requires you to kill X number of monsters of your choosing. The subjugation quest will reward you with four burning moonlight powder. The second option is the restocking supply quest. This one is life skill focus and requires you to gather X number of materials of your choosing. The life skill quest will reward you with two burning moonlight powder. You'd want to do the daily kill quest as much as you can, since it will reward you with double the amount of burning moonlight powder. However, if you don't have a lot of time to grind, you can instead do the daily life skill quest. If so, I'd recommend doing the daily restocking supplies grunt, because you can just AFK fish along the Valia coast and come back later to hand in the materials needed to finish the quest. The second ingredient is the Jonas fragment. You cannot buy this directly from the central market. Instead, you can obtain this fragment by processing and heating certain accessories. You can also just accumulate them slowly by defeating monsters in the Valencia region. Some of the best places to obtain Jonas fragment is in this place right here, Centaur's Plain. This spot is one of the best, if not the best spot for early players to grind at. It doesn't require too much gear, and you can expect up to 400 to 600 million silvers per hour with loot scrolls. You could also complete your subjugation quest from Jatina here at the same time. Additionally, this place also drops the sealed magical crystal. You can heat these crystals for the magical shard, which is your third ingredient. And with all grinding activity, you will accumulate black stone armor and weapon from drops. So, from the attendance reward and your daily subjugation, kill quest. You can technically get all the materials you need for the burning moonlight black stone, right here in Centaur's Plain. Super easy and totally not complicated, right? You got this. I believe in you. And lastly, you'll need Old Moon Alchemy Catalyst, which can be obtained by buying them for 3.5 million silvers at an Old Moon Manager's. The Old Moon Managers are located in every major city. Use the NPC Finder and type Old Moon Manager, and it will set a path for your character to automatically follow. Once you have all five ingredients, you can finally create the burning moonlight black stones. To create, use simple alchemy through the processing system using all five ingredients. You will need five burning moonlight black stone for your prior attempt. Keep in mind that the total materials needed for each enhancement level increases as you progress. The total amount of materials needed is as follows. You'll need 180 burning moonlight black stones to get from base all the way to pen. This essentially means you'll need a total of 180 burning moonlight powder, 180 Jonas fragment, 330 magical shard, 1100 catalysts, and 11,000 black stones. This is why I recommend saving up all of your black stones that you get from the attendance reward. Once you have everything, simply use the Black Spirit and enchant your accessories all the way to Tet. The last pen enhancement level requires a different black stone called the Dancing Moonlight Black Stone. To get this black stone, all you have to do is hand over 110 Burning Moonlight Black Stone and a try accessory to Jatina through the Shining Brighter quest that you can accept from her. Make sure to hand over the same accessory as the one you're enhancing to pen. For example, if you're creating a pen crescent ring, then you'll need to hand off a tri crescent ring. Yes, that's right. You'll have to hand over a tri accessory worth close to 2 billion silvers, but it'll be worth it. Because now, you have the final piece needed to enchant your tet accessory to pen. Your name will also be branded onto the pen accessory, which is super duper marvelously cool. Also, this accessory cannot be sold on the marketplace either, so it's essentially yours forever. 
If for whatever reason you'd like to swap your accessories, you can simply talk to Jatina and she will offer you an exchange for a different accessory for free. You can only do this twice. After that, you'll have to pay her 2 billion silver each time you want to swap accessories. If you did all your grinding at Centaurs, especially for all of your burning moonlight powder daily quest, you can expect to have over 14 billion silvers. Personally, I have gotten over 30 billion silvers, but I have also grind past the finished daily kill quest. I tend to lean more towards you having more than 14 billion silvers after you're done, but it all depends on how much you play. With this amount of silvers, it's your choice whether or not you want to buy a Tet Black Star or buy a Pen Xarka and Pen Dandelion. Okay, let's move on to the second project, which is the Guaranteed Pen Boss Gear Project. And as I've said before, you can absolutely do these two projects at the same time. You don't have to wait to finish one before doing the other. When you exchange your Pen Tuvala gear for a Tet Boss gear by speaking to Jatina, that same Tet Boss gear has a method that can guarantee it to Pen at 100% success rate. To do this, you must upgrade it five times with five different reform stones. I will explain how you can obtain all five shortly. First, talk to Jatina to get a weekly quest for the piece of armor or weapon you wish to enchant to pen. For example, my chosen piece is Beg's Glove, so I pick this one. Pick the quest that corresponds to the gear you wish to get to pen. Now you need to complete this quest to get your first weapon reform stone. This weekly quest requires you to give her two latent auras. These latent auras can easily be obtained by killing the world boss of your choosing. Since I pick Beg's glove, I'll have to kill Beg as either a field boss or from the Dark Rift normal or Awakened Scrolls. To give you an idea of when your chosen boss is going to spawn, you can either join the Black Desert Online boss discord or use the website Velia's Inn. Don't worry, link to both will be in the description below. Once you kill your chosen boss and get your two latent auras, you can then complete the quest by talking to Jatina. She will give you 115 concentrated boss crystal for two latent auras. Each weekly quest will reward you with 115 concentrated boss crystal. These boss crystals are one of the key ingredients in making your reform stones. Also, this weekly quest resets every Thursday at midnight. The other ingredients you need are the following. One rough opal, you can obtain this by mining or with your worker nodes. You can also buy this off the marketplace, but they are in quite a high demand, so you might have to wait a bit to get one. Then you'll need 20 magical shards. This can be obtained by heating yellow grade black magic crystals using the processing mechanic. 60 concentrated boss crystal, which once again obtained by the weekly quest for two latent auras. 10 concentrated magical black stone which can be obtained by heating a hard or sharp shard with a black stone weapon or armor. Or you can just buy it off the marketplace. And 50 memory fragments which you can just buy off the marketplace. To be perfectly honest, I never have to buy any of these materials off the marketplace at all, with the exception of the rough opal. Just by logging in, the attendance's reward alone will provide you most, if not all, of the materials you really need. Once you heat all the materials together, you'll get your first resplendent reform stone. This is the first stone required to upgrade your gear to reform level 1. The recipe is the same for all gears, except the crystal and black stone that is reflected by the gear you want to upgrade. Each reform stone requires more effort and cost than the last. The materials will cost more, but the procedure will remain the same with the exception of the last pen reform stones. That one requires additional materials of 30 concentrated boss aura and one aquila crystal. You'll also need different tier of opals. Polished opal, brilliant opal and moonlight opal can all be bought at the marketplace. Do yourself a favour and just buy the opal off the marketplace since this entire process is time gated. At the absolute max speed, you'll get everything done at about three weeks time. To obtain 30 concentrated boss auras, you need to do simple alchemy on a tri boss gear. The boss gear must be of the same boss name as the guaranteed pen that you desire. Here is me destroying a tri peg gloves worth 1.4 billion silvers. Yes, I almost cried and so will you. For the Aquila Crystal, first head over to Jatina again and accept a quest called Resplendent Weapon or Armor Reform Stone of Aquila Sky or Earth Crystal. Pick one that corresponds to the gear you want pen. For this quest, 
you must exchange a certain amount of an item called a quiller piece of the old moon. This item can be purchased at any old moon, manager NPC with straight silver. This NPC is located in every major city. Use the NPC finder and type in old moon manager. It will directly set a path to this NPC for you. Simply exchange your silver for the amount required. Your first guaranteed pen boss gear will be the cheapest to get. Your first pen weapon will require 30 Aquila piece of the old moon. This cost 1.5 billion silvers. Each time you need another Aquila for your second guaranteed pen weapon, the price will increase. This is also true for your first pen defense gear. Your first pen defense armor will require 80 Aquila piece of the old moon. This cost a total of 4 billion silvers. Each time you need another Oquilla for your second guaranteed pen armor, the price will increase. Here is what I mean. Your first guaranteed pen gear will be the cheapest. If you want to do this method again for a second guaranteed pen boss gear, the required amount of Oquilla piece of the old moon will also increase. Therefore, the amount of silver required to purchase increases. This also doesn't include costs of other mats, such as memory fragments, black stones, black magic crystals, and the 1.4 billion silver tri-boss gear that you'll have to process for the boss auras. To be really honest, I think the guaranteed pen method is only worth doing once and only for the defense gear. Also, if you are having trouble picking which gear to choose for your first pen, the best choice would be the red nose armor, since you can upgrade it to pen Kafras level 10 and turn it into fallen gods armor. Do not pick dim tree as an alternative, since it requires more Kafras than it does red nose. If you already have the Fallen God armor, then you can pick either the Griffin's Helmet or Beg's Glove, which can be upgraded to Labreska's Helmet, and the New Dawn's Glove coming in the land of the Morning Light expansion. Keep in mind that your new boss gear will be bound to family and can't be sold at the marketplace. However, the chest and helmet can be upgraded to Fallen God's armor and Labreska's Helmet, which can be sold. All right, so doing the two projects is great. If you're grinding, you might as well do them for the pen accessory and free pen boss gear. There is also another quest line you could complete as well called the Abyssal Magnus. The Magnus is a set of challenges that provides you quite a bit of benefit after completion, such as fast traveling between well, new skill for your class, remote storage access, and lastly, another free pen armor piece. There is a lot to talk about that could easily stretch this video up to an hour, so I highly recommend looking up a guide on how to complete the Magnus questline and its challenges and puzzles. You'd want to complete the Magnus questline as soon as you possibly can since unlike the previous two, this one is not time-gated. So when you finish all three projects, your gear should be looking more like this now. For example, free pen red nose from Jatina's guaranteed pen questline, Free Pen Beg from the Abyssal Magnus, Pen Xarka and Pen Dandelion from the silvers you get from grinding at Centaurs for the Subjugation quest, and obviously a free Pen Crescent Ring once you're done. You're basically almost full Pen Boss gear at this point. This gear is provided you play minimally as well. If you continue grinding past the Subjugation quest at Centaurs, you can be looking at another Pen piece or two. Now that you've done with everything, it's time to get the rest of your pen pieces. Now, you won't be going back to Centaurs. Thank God, right? You're probably bored of that place by now. Instead, you'll be going to a different place called Sicria Underwater Ruins. Now, this location right here shows the upper zone, but there is a lower zone that can be accessed. And with the current gear that you should now have, you should be fine grinding here. You can expect to earn 500 to 700 million silver per hour with loot scrolls. You will also be getting a ton of Kafra stone here as well, which I do recommend keeping, because you'll need it to upgrade your new pen boss gear. You'll also be earning Tungrad rings, amongst other things, making this place one of the best place to grind up, till you reach around 650 gear score, which should put you around 280 AP and 366 DP. Actually, until you reach that level of gear, technically you never have to worry about another location again. But if you're sick and tired of seeing the same stuff over and over again, you can begin working on other tasks, such as getting the Shard of the Furious Knight and the Shard of the Drained Knight from Elvia's server. These two items are required in order to make the Cup Accessory Enhancements upgrade, and they can be found at Orcs Camp and Bloody Monastery. 
So at some point, you'll have to do those upgrade anyway. So if you are totally bored of Cycria underwater ruins, which I won't blame you, you can mix it up a bit and go to a different place that's more green and less grey. I believe that covers nearly everything I wanted to say. Remember everyone, it's all about the journey. Aim big, but move slowly and enjoy every step along the way. That is Black Desert Online. It is all about those little steps that makes the journey feel so rewarding and complete. I hope that you find this video helpful. I know it's long, but I try to keep it as short as I possibly can. Thank you so very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and remember to have fun.